Hi. Uh, thanks for staying, guys. Uh, I just want to quickly um, acknowledge some some really great support that we had from some incredible organizations that are pushing culture in Canada. Uh, we had the support of the Ontario Arts Council, the Canada Arts Council, and um, Telefilm Canada, as well as the Harold Greenberg Fund. So I want to give a shout out to those guys, some really great humans and some great organizations worth checking out. Um, also, I've got some, some co-conspirators here, two producers from the film, Tanya Thompson and Darcy Van Polgeest. You guys want to come up and hang out? Come on, don't be shy. We've also got uh, Jordan Gray here, I believe. Come on, come on up, buddy, who plays Mr. Meekle in the film. Uh, I think Adrian Glynn might have taken off. Adrian, are you still here? Hi. Adrian, Adrian uh, and the band The Fugitives did the, the song that was on the end credits there. Um, am I missing anybody? Is anybody else here? Um, this is your first feature, and some members of the audience may be familiar with your short films, which have played here at VIF over the last few years. Um, for those who aren't familiar with them, they're very conceptual, even abstract. They incorporate elements of sculpture, animation, performance art. It's a pretty big jump to the lock picker. Could you talk about taking on a narrative feature? Gotta, gotta try different things, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, this was a, a, a story close to my heart and, and um, a lot of ideas and themes and, 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 and concepts and characters that, we, that I really wanted to explore. And, um, yeah, uh, for a lot of different reasons and, and, and um, things that we wanted to try stylistically and conceptually. Um, you know, the short that we had done before this uh, was, you know, an animated, hybrid, very specific, um, you know, storyboarded, very slow piece to make. And uh, I really wanted to dive into this piece with you know, something a little bit more raw and get into the room with some, some, some characters and some actors and, and, and uh, explore some of those m more restrained moments um, and, and hold back on, on some of the other, you know, tricks and different things that people use. And especially for, for the first one, you know, we really wanted to, to lean into the story as much as possible and, and, uh, um, you know, we spend a lot of time looking for our lead, and uh, really wanted to kind of let 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 him do uh, do some of the work in terms of telling the story. Going off of that, could you talk specifically about the character of Hashi and uh, finding uh, Keegan to play him? Yeah, we tried uh, we tried a lot of things on this one in terms of the process. We we worked um, we did a lot of things, but one oh, do we lose the mic? We, uh, one of the things we did is we worked with uh, an open operating high school and we partnered with this high school to involve uh, a big number of students in front of the camera and behind the camera and we used what we kind of called an open book production methodology. So we, um, you know, a lot of the students um, that wanted to be in front of the camera were there and students sh kind of shadowing different um, members of the crew uh, behind the scenes and we would sort of explain what we were doing, why we were doing it as we were moving along. Um, and, and you know, we, we tried to value sort of the authenticity of uh, some of the, some of the, the youthful experiences um, over a lot of other sort of traditional production styles. Um, and then along with that, you know, we spent a long time looking for, looking for our, for our lead and, um, uh, you know, we cast all over North America, and and we saw a lot of kids. And um, one day we ran into Keegan at one of the high schools we were scouting, and uh, he's 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 very different than the character he plays in the film, but but he he had a little bit of magic to him. And and uh, um, Jason Lapere, another one of the producers, and I, as soon as we met him, we sort of we'd been talking about this character for months and months, and. He kind of yeah came up and started chatting with us, and when he walked away, we were just like, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta track that kid down. And I think he did a great job. It was his first performance. Like he'd he'd uh, 
he had been a grip and a PA before on a couple of films. And um, yeah, he is a pretty incredible human being. It's a, it's a big thing to take on. And he attacked this project with like so much openness and, and so much, um, you know, courage. And I think he pulled off a lot of things that he could, he pulled them off because he didn't know how hard they were supposed to be, you know? I'm gonna pass the mic down this way. <clears throat> a general question for each of you, just to talk about what got you excited about being involved with the lock picker. I think shooting in a, a school was the best part. Yeah, just because it was untested and a lot of and challenge. Um, there is a lot of things to be excited about. Um, uh, I, I, Randall and I have um, been working together for a few years. I worked as a producer on a handful of his shorts, and he's worked as a producer on a handful of mine. And so it wasn't. Uh, so I guess it was just the opportunity to work together again. I didn't really give it too much thought, other than, you know, he sent me the script and. It's like, will you do it? And I was like, yeah, sure, all right, okay. So, so yeah, it was pretty organic, and I was just, um, yeah, just excited. And like you mentioned in the beginning, I was like, really, you know, interest interested to see how Randall tackled live action and how you know, and and still sort of like maintained that really cool, you know, sculpturesque work that that so much of the short's been based on integrated into the live action so yeah it was, it was just along for the ride um hi i'm jordan um i and en really really enjoyed working with randall because he is a lot unorthodox when it comes to directing in a, in a great way um usually there's sometimes you can get a separation between actors and the director and they kind of give you a few notes, but with Randall, he really very in tuned. Um, and I was saying it earlier today, uh, I felt, you know, leaving a scene, I was missing something and he'd come over and kind of tell me exactly what I was missing, which is sometimes hard to get. And uh, yeah, shooting with actual students, because sometimes you shoot with actors and then they get really antsy and, you know, try to grab the attention of the camera, but these, these kids actually had to quiet them and Randall would get them to actually act up, so I didn't even have to act. Um, yeah. Questions from the audience? Or not? Oh, way in the back corner. Yes, please uh, speak as clearly as you can. No, don't be sorry. Uh, thanks for the questions. Um, with the editing process, yeah, I, you know, there's, there's a, there's a. Yeah, we tried. We we really tried a lot of things um, in in the process. I really wanted to, uh, you know, we set out. I think to 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 just go for it on this one in a lot of ways and and try to learn. Uh, by sort of designing our own process and, and going after it the way we wanted to. Uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of um, resources and, and, you know, we a lot of us were, were working in between other things and, 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 and for the love of the project. So we really wanted to kind of just, yeah, go after a process that we felt was right for the film. So uh, in, in this case, we had two different editors. We had a lot of footage and I worked with two editors who were pretty remarkable, uh, Mike Reisker and John Egan. And, you know, we, we figured out our own process that we could work they you know they were working in two different suites at certain times and then we would get all in the same space and work together on on one suite for a little bit and um 
you know, there's a lot of, there was, there was a lot of pressure sometimes to sort of like meet a certain schedule and, and get, you know, things done at a, at a, at a certain pace. And, um, because of the way that, you know, we wanted to cut some of these sequences and, and the way that we wanted to try, uh, a lot of different things. Um, yeah, we, we had a lot of conversations and sort of took the time we needed. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to, to talk about the process, um, after the fact and uh, other than to say like it was long, it was long and, and 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 we really tried hard and did a lot of things um we you know i think one of the things that um kind of combines the w the two questions you know we i also collaborated a bunch of times with uh this composer duo that that goes by menelon um and it's lodwig voss and joseph murray and because we had done, you know, sort of six or seven projects in the past and, and they'd worked on all the shorts. Um, and they had done the s music and the sound design. I somehow conned them into doing uh, that on this film. And, you know, we had done a number of features. It's a, obviously a whole other question when you're dealing with uh, um, a feature as opposed to a short. Uh, but they were amazing to take it on. And so to be able to have, you know, when you're going from these moments of reality to going into a little bit of surreal um, treatment, whether it's, you know, to match the camera and or just, just the sound design and what he's listening to and how we're sort of experiencing um, how he takes on the world. Um, it was nice to have that conversation with, with, with the same people and for them to be able to deal with the sound design as well as the music and, and sort of know what was gonna be happening when. I also conned them into getting involved uh, very early in the edit. So, you know, because they're longtime collaborators, they were aware of the script and they were aware of the project, but they um, were composing, like we were using some of their stuff for temp score and we were talking about the, the, the sound treatment very early on and we started, they started making uh, music for the film as we were editing, so to influence each other um, was was pretty amazing. Yeah, did that answer the question, kind of? Maybe. More questions? Going off of sound, could you talk about the tape recorder and the idea of it? Yeah, um, you know, I think uh, it was a tool for him to sort of uh, interface with the world in the way that he felt comfortable with, uh, in a way to sort of revisit uh, conversations and memories and to try to make sense of, 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 of his world as he went through it. Um, and then, you know, specifically sort of where the story starts, it's also something that was um, his way of holding on to, to a relationship that meant a lot to him and, and trying to continue that. Um, you know, it's and it was also obviously very personal and and isolated or isolating, um, because it, it's not something that he was able to share with the people around him. Um, yeah, uh, it's not an unfamiliar uh, scenario: high school coming of age drama, an alienated teenager. But it is an unfamiliar way of approaching it. And going off of what you just said, um, the the way that the relationship he had is never clear to the viewer completely and, and sort of the way things are obscured and there's no exposition and the dialogue is mostly incidental and circles around things but doesn't really get at them. Can you talk about the stylistic approach to the film? Yeah, I mean, I think there was some really specific stuff that I had in my you know heart and head that I wanted to, to, to explore and get out there and I also think um, I think it's 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 common for a reason. I think that uh, you know we've all been uh, 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 young people trying to find how to be the heroes of our own story, and I think that um, in this particular case, we wanted to explore the idea of of somebody who uh, was having a particular time uh, 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 and was you know being exposed to maybe some dangerous. Um, traumatic things and maybe didn't have the safety net that that some of us have and and um, you know how close we can sort of get to making the wrong decisions or or, or uh, 
um, going down a, a sort of more dangerous path because of a lack of luck or because of the intersection of a couple of unlucky events. And, um, you know, I th what I wanted to explore, I think the most sort of genuine way to do that was, was more about sort of trying to feel where the character was and see and feel things from his perspective and go from sort of being scared for him to scared of him. And I think that, um, yeah, I think it's less about the details of, of some of those transactions than it is, you know, um, kind of getting into his psychological space and, and trying to sort of, uh, yeah, just experience what it's like to sort of go through that, a, a particular time when you're isolated and where those pressures are happening and, um, or influencing how, how you're feeling. And, uh, um, yeah, it kind of came from there. I mean, it was uh, it was it was an interesting kind of conversation, to especially in the edit, and you know when we got to the point of sound design to sort of figure out how overt or covert we were going to be with some of those things, and how much it would make sense, and 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 you know how much we would ask of the audience, or how much of that could come across without having some of those really specific handles. Um, yeah. More questions from the audience. Yes. Um, I, I really, really loved it. I mean, I think uh, as hard as it was and as challenging as it was for us at times, you know, that process and, and being able to kind of go after, um, you know, the authenticity of working with real teens. I mean, we, we decided very early that we didn't want to um, go out and rent an empty, you know, vacant building or high school and then hire a bunch of you know, 25 year old extras to dress like they thought high school students would dress and talk like, you know, they thought high school students would talk. Um, and I think that that was an entirely unrealistic and silly idea, but we, you know, we managed to pull it off through, through the hard work of, of, of these humans up here. And, you know, at that point, it was kind of pure joy, like like to be able to go through that process with them, for them to learn, for us to be able to have discussions, sensitive and otherwise, about some of the scenes we were trying to portray and why we were trying to portray them and why we would be reenacting these, you know, traumatic, violent sort of scenarios and and what we were trying to explore. You know, uh, I'd like I'd like to think that um, some of that authenticity and some of those 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 um, uh, like nuances come through in the film, but but even if they don't, you know the 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 joy in that and the the experience of that and working with with real students, kind of that were very close to some of these concerns and some of these moments of their lives was, you know, uh, pretty amazing. Um, and like I say, uh, the the conversations were great. I mean, you know, we're 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 all learning, but and I think that every kind of actor. I mean, Jordan's. Uh, 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 a straight up pro and has done a lot of work and is, is very fast and, and you know we can have a certain a different kind of conversation but even amongst you know seasoned professional actors sort of everybody has their process and does things differently so to work with Keegan or to work with you know Sarah Snellis, Sarah Nellis McGee who, who who plays the very mean shouty girl on the film um, you know every time it was a little bit different but I mean it was great it was it was a lot of fun and uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it any other way. I think we have time for one or two more questions. Uh, Randall, could you talk about what's next? Um, are you going to keep making features? Are you going to return to this type of shorts that we're, we've seen from you? What's next? All of those things. Um, there's a couple of uh, shorts in the work. Um, there's another feature which, um, yeah, will 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 be will be different. I mean, it, but um, it'll be a little bit different. I'm also working on a, a a virtual reality project with the with the film board that will be also very different and weird. 
thank you so much for bringing your film to Vancouver. Thank you. Thank you